Another free app that's included with Mac OS is GarageBand. So all I've done here is installed GarageBand and opened it, and this is the initial screen that you're gonna be presented with. And GarageBand includes a number of options. I'm not gonna cover all of them. I just wanna show you how to easily record and mix some music and some content, and then you can share that to Final Cut Pro 10. So in this opening screen on the left column, you can go into Learn to Play and Lesson Store to learn how to play instruments, but we're just gonna create a new project. There are some templates available and some starting points here, but I'm gonna actually start with an empty project. Just just show you what you can create. So just double click on empty project and it's gonna load the GarageBand interface. Now, similar to Final Cut Pro where you can add video clips to a timeline, you can do that here in GarageBand as well. And anyone that's worked with audio and even video in the past knows that tracks are huge. Every instrument in a song and every vocal, each person that's singing is gonna be on their own track. So that's the first thing that we're being asked is what do we want our first track to be? You can choose a software instrument. This would be like a digital keyboard that you have connected to your computer. You can even use your typing keyboard on your computer as a MIDI device if you wanted to. Or if you're gonna record audio, where you have an actual instrument connected to your Mac, or you're gonna use a microphone to record uh, some vocals or some uh, audio, you're gonna choose one of these audio tracks. And then there's even an option for drummer, and this is a specialized one. I'm not gonna go into that in this video here, but I just wanna show a software instrument and a microphone. So first, let's start off with a microphone track. With it selected, we get an option to choose the input that we're gonna record from. So we could do one or two or both at the same time. I'm gonna choose both in this case. And we could say we wanna hear the instrument. I'm not gonna do that in this case because I don't have headphones on and I'm not gonna create some feedback. So then once you hit create, now we get uh, into GarageBand here. And here's our first track. It's just called Audio One. You can double click on this if you wanna name the tracks and the essentially we're set up now ready to go so we can see the levels here if i don't talk for a second you're going to see the levels go down and i know i'm ready to record so i'm going to hit the record button at the top here that's this red button we're going to get a countdown and now it's recording you can see the audio waveforms coming just from my voice it's picking up that audio and putting it into the track i'm going to hit the stop button here to stop recording and because i chose uh, stereo essentially we can see the stereo pair there for that track so that's how easy it is to record audio using GarageBand really straightforward you just have to create the correct track so in addition to that if I want to create a software instrument or another track I'm just gonna hit the plus button here to create a new track and you could repeat the same steps if you wanted to do another audio vocal track maybe you're creating an interview back and forth so you want two separate uh, vocals you could do that in this case, I'm just going to create a software instrument here and hit create. And with the software instrument, on the left column, we have a library and we can browse through to find what kind of instrument we want this software to be playing. Right now, it's a classic electric piano, but I could go through and select from a number of different instruments here. Uh, if you see this little arrow next to some of them, that means those instruments are not downloaded yet and you'll want to download them. I have not installed all of them on this account yet, so that's why they're not showing up as available. But let's just say, for example, that I want to change it from the electric piano. I want to go up to drum kit. I'll select one of those, and we get all of our options here. So uh, let's choose deep tech. I select it, and notice the icon changes, letting us know that the essentially the sounds that are going to be playing are different for this, uh, this track here. So that's how you select and change an instrument. You can go up to the window menu and there's an option here for musical typing. Uh, so musical typing brings up this little window and this is where we can use our built-in keyboard as our instrument. So just pushing the different keys on the keyboard, play the different, uh, in this case it's a drum kit, so it's just playing the different sounds from that jump drum kit. If I wanted to, if I decide I wanna go back to the piano, I'm just gonna do the classic electric piano. And then we can hear the sounds coming from the piano there. So if we want to record that, same thing that we did before. I'm going to hit the record button. 
We're gonna get a little countdown, get a countdown here. Countdown, and now it's recording. You can see the audio waveforms coming just from my voice. It's picking up that audio. And if you could hear that, it was playing back both the sound of the original audio track, and then we had our uh, classic electric piano playing here. I just put in a couple notes, and there they are. So again, I don't want to go too deep into GarageBand here for this lesson, but you can select these tracks. And at the bottom, we get some information for that track. We can actually go in and change uh, the EQ, some of the effects. Uh, you can really customize these tracks, uh, tracks which is uh, really nice. There's just a lot of control that you get here in GarageBand. And GarageBand is very similar to iMovie, comparing it to Final Cut. So if iMovie is kind of your beginner video editing application, that's kind of what GarageBand is here for audio. So if you want to get more advanced, you can go up to Logic Pro, and Logic is similar to Final Cut. It's more advanced, you get more options, but don't put GarageBand kind of out of the way. It's still a very powerful app, and a lot of people like to use this to record their soundtracks and their audio that they're going to use in Final Cut. So let's say that we've completed our project now, and we do want to go to Final Cut. Here's what we're going to want to do. At the top, we have a share menu. And you can go up here and share this, similar to exporting this song. You could export it actually out to your hard drive or maybe an external drive where you're storing all of your content. But you can also just say that you want to share this to the media browser. And this is similar to sharing uh, other content from, say, iMovie or even the Photos app, just importing photos into that app. Those meet those media assets, whether it be photos or movies, are then available in a browser that you could access from Final Cut. So uh, here I've done that. this song. I'm going to hit Command S here to save this project. We'll just call it the project. That's fine. Um, I've shared it out to the media browser. So let's switch to Final Cut Pro. Here we are in Final Cut Pro 10. I'm going to go to the photos and audio sidebar at the top left here. And here I've got GarageBand selected on my source on the left column. And notice here's that project. So now I have the project song I could preview at the top here. We're going to just drag this right into the project and it's ready to go. The uh, downfall to this, I would say, is that it has compressed it and, and mixed it down into one track. So if I wanted to make change, changes to, say, the audio that I recorded before or the mini, if I go back here into GarageBand, I can make those changes, but I can't make those just inside of uh, Final Cut. But I would go here, I'd make those changes, go up to Share, Song to Media Browser again. Obviously, this is a very short song, so it happens almost immediately. I can use Command-Tab to switch back to Final Cut. And uh, here's our uh, song there. It may not have updated just yet. I'll switch back and forth. But once we get that song, we'll see it here. And we could bring that back into the uh, project here. If I want, I could drag it right on top of the previous version and just hit replace. So that's a way you can go through and update the tracks uh, after the fact. So you can just drag it down and hit replace. Um, so that's uh, really all I have to say about GarageBand. Just kind of a quick overview. There's a ton to it if you've never looked at it to edit audio and maybe Final Cuts hasn't given you all the tools you needed or you want to edit something in a little bit more uh, audio focused area, GarageBand is there for you. You can go through and start learning about audio uh, editing using GarageBand and then when you need more out of your audio tools, Logic is a great option. In a similar fashion when you're using Logic, you can share out and you have a whole Logic browser here where you'll see all of your projects and you can access them, edit them, all that good stuff. So hopefully that gives you an overview of GarageBand and maybe some ways and maybe some ways to think about using it in your workflow. If you have any specific questions, like always, put them in the comments below or send an email to finalcutprohelp at me.com. We are nearing the end. I think we're about two thirds of the way through the month right now. So we're nearing the end of this month of Mac OS tips. Again, if there's something specific you wanna see, let me know. Otherwise, once this month concludes, we have Final Cut Pro Help Live on the first of every month. And this coming month is going to be a fun one because we have a new version of Final Cut Pro 10 to talk about. So make sure to subscribe and you'll be notified when we go live with that stream. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. And if you're watching these as I'm releasing them, 
We have Thanksgiving coming this week. Enjoy your Thanksgiving.